uh, in the past several classes we have been looking at phase detectors. We saw a linear phase detector, basically its output the area under its output pulse when there is a transition is proportional to the phase difference between data and clock. And then we also saw a bank bank phase detector or a binary phase detector. Now, the area under this uh, pulse is fixed it is either positive or negative it is the same area uh, for every transition regardless of the phase difference, but the important thing is it does not suffer from this uh, systematic offset uh, that the linear phase detector has right. Linear phase detector simply because the flip flops have clock to queue delay it will have some uh, offset ok. You can try to cancel it by having a matching delay in the other path, but usually it is very hard to track the clock to queue delay of the flip flop with a transmission gate delay ok. An assignment on this is due, but uh, I was a bit busy with some other courses uh, this week, so I will put it up. So, you can uh, simulate these things and see them for yourself ok. Now, uh, when we write down the characteristics of the phase detectors, what we plot is the area or the output average assuming that there is a transition. So, you have to always keep in mind that in a real scenario depending on the fraction of uh, transitions that are actually there the output average will be multiplied by that ok. That is the transition density will multiply the output average ok. So, <coughs> now uh, when we draw it we do not draw it because uh, it just looks too messy. Uh, when we draw the characteristics I show the gain of uh, 1 by 2 pi for the linear phase detector, but that means that there is a transition when there is a transition you have this ok. Now, if you look at uh, an alternating pattern 1 0 1 0 right this has every transition right the transition density is 1. So, you can imagine that if you test the phase detector with this data that is what you will get ok. So, the way we use either the linear or the bang bang phase detector is exactly the same. We have the input data, input clock, a variable delay ok. This is phase detector, this gives you first of all up and down ok and it also gives you the recovered data right, because there will be a flip flop which will be clocking this data with this clock. The output of that is the recovered data ok. And if we have a capacitor here, we know that this sends current pulses into this, but on average if, if it is lagging that means if the rising edge of the clock is to the right of the data the rising edge of the clock is to the right of the center of the data, you will keep on getting up signals this will keep going up. So, you can feed it to this one. Now, assume that the delay has this is V c delay versus V c it is a decreasing characteristic. I just took this because uh, if you take a chain of inverters and if you use the supply voltage as uh, the control voltage then as you increase the supply voltage the delay actually reduces right. So, that is why I took this. Of course, if it is the other way around you have to invert it. So, this is a negative feedback loop which will eventually settle meaning the average current uh, flowing into the capacitor is 0 that is the meaning of settling here. At that point the rising edge of this clock this is clock in and this is clock in steady state which means that average of ICP equals 0. Rising edge of the clock is in the middle of data symbol ok exactly how you want it to be. In principle this can be either a bang bang or a linear phase detector ok. Any questions about this 
anything that we discussed earlier. Yeah. No, I didn't mean a digital inverter. What I mean is you have to reverse the sign. Is that what you are talking about? If uh, tau versus V C is increasing. Uh, why? No, no, which is the analog voltage here? So this is a clock in that is digital, this is the control voltage. <coughs> okay. Now, actually, if it is indeed like this, we cannot connect this V C directly to that point because. Uh, this is drawing current, average current. So that will. Uh, so we need to have. We need to have that so that uh, you don't draw current from the capacitor. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, we will come to that. The bang bang one of the things is any bang bang control system, it will always keep chattering around. Even in the ideal case, it will have its own jitter. Whereas the linear phase detector in principle does not have that, it just sits there, right. I mean, even that is not true, but it will be smaller, okay. <coughs> so, that is one of the disadvantages of the bang bang <coughs> uh, implementation. Also, it turns out that. Uh, this bang bang right i mean ideally it is binary if it is uh, if it is lagging it gives you uh, minus 1 and if it is leading it gives you plus 1 but in reality we will see that uh, the jitter in the input data will actually smooth out the characteristics of the bang bang phase detector so a lot of the properties of this uh, whole loop will depend on the input jitter okay the input jitter is like the operating point of the uh, clock and data recovery circuit. So, that will uh, uh, that will change that and also if you try to implement the bang bang phase detection at a lower rate by demultiplexing you will have more delays that will add more bang bang jitter and so on. Otherwise it is good, but uh, it has some issues. The main disadvantage of the linear one is of course, one is the systematic offset and other is you have to produce even narrower pulses than this that is difficult. Anything else? Yeah, uh, those are uh, practical circuit level details I would not uh, go into that now. It is true that clearly if this is a chain of inverters and V c starts from 0. I mean this clock goes in, but nothing comes out right. So, if the supply voltage here is 0, whatever you put in nothing will come out. So, it will not even start. So, there should be uh, some uh, arrangement to clamp the minimum value of V c, so that you do not go to I mean you do not disable the circuit in time. Any other question? <coughs> okay. We will look at all these other details of the bang bang uh, detector as well as the linear one later. So, now we have a hang of uh, the rudimentary clock and data recovery uh, arrangement when we have a forwarded clock, when we have a clock from the transmit side, we know how to align its phase to the incoming random data. Okay. We have to evaluate the characteristics uh, more quantitatively that is if the input data has jitter what will happen to the clock also how long does it take for it to track and things like that. Okay. Those things we will do, we will make a small signal model for this thing. But before that let us just generate a, a rudimentary clock and data recovery arrangement for the case where we do not have a forwarded clock. right? So, 
so here we have <coughs> no forwarded clock means there is a clock coming from the transmit side no without forwarded clock means i mean there is no clock there is only data okay and you have to generate the clock okay This is the transmitter, this is the receiver. So, we have data and a channel for the data, but we also have a clock. Okay. So, you have clock coming from there, whereas without forward clock, you have only this one. out of battery. I just come forward, I mean I think by the time we get the battery and so on, we will be done. So, when we uh, have this uh, data, there is no other uh, clock. So, we have to generate the clock locally. Okay. So, what is <coughs> essentially what it means is that, so we have a crystal oscillator at the transmitter okay which generates the clock the crystal oscillator and a phase lock loop this generates the clock we can use the same crystal oscillator here also okay but they are physically two different crystals and their frequencies will never exactly be the same so we can assume that we know the frequency approximately but not exactly okay so, what is it that we need to generate a clock? What is the block that generates a clock? <coughs> because here we need to generate a clock with the right frequency and the right phase. So, that means that we need to have some uh, circuit whose frequency can be varied. What is that? Yeah, voltage controlled oscillator, right. So, we need to have a clearly if you do not have any forwarded clock, you need to have some way of, uh, I mean, this is not the only way, we will see. But we need to have some way of generating uh, different frequencies, which can be controlled electronically. So, this is the voltage controlled oscillator and this will be used in the receiver. Now, the question is how do you generate the control voltage of the voltage controlled oscillator. Now, I can just put down the circuit instead what I will do is I will look at uh, how things were behaving without the forwarded clock and try to translate the same to the case with the forwarded clock. Okay. I will show a single box for the phase detector, this contains whatever uh, is required inside right the multiple flip flops then we have the charge pump okay and this uh, control voltage is fed to that one okay <coughs> Now, we have to define some quantities in particular the phase of a signal okay? because the phase of the clock is what matters. right? So, <coughs> you may know this already that uh, if you have a signal a periodic signal I will write cos, but I do not necessarily mean a cosine it can be any periodic signal with a uh, with some phase. Okay. <coughs> cos theta of t. Okay, this is of course 
periodic in theta with a period 2 pi right. Now, <coughs> instead of cos theta of t we could also have some p of theta of t where p is some other pulse shape it could even be a rectangular pulse, but uh, p is also periodic in theta with a period 2 pi. Okay. Then <coughs> this looks like a convoluted way of uh, defining things, but we will get the point soon. Now, let us say theta equals 2 pi f naught t right. So, that is theta versus time this is a ramp okay, with some slope and what is the slope it is 2 pi f naught. So, what kind of signal will this correspond to if theta equals 2 pi f naught t what is it what is the signal cos theta of t what will that be. Right. So, sinusoid now this is periodic in time also this cos function is always periodic in its argument right in theta. Now, if theta is linear in t theta is proportional to t then it is also periodic in t. Now, this if theta equals 2 pi f naught t this represents a signal with frequency f naught hertz right or 2 pi f naught radians per second. Okay. So, a signal that is periodic in time has a phase which is linear with time okay, that is the idea this is okay. linear meaning a straight line. Now, we could also have theta to be 2 pi f naught t plus some phi naught some offset. Okay, this does not change anything it just changes the phase by a fixed amount as long as the slope is the same the frequency is the same. Okay. Then, if you have something like this with a higher frequency the theta versus time curve will be steeper. Okay. <coughs> this is okay. Now, when we have uh, signals like in our case with varying phase right ideally it should be periodic I mean the whole thing if you look at it we skipped some details the clock is supposed to be a periodic signal, but we are changing its phase continuously it means it is actually not periodic right. If you look at the 0 crossings of the clock as the clock and data recovery loop is working it is moving the edges back and forth. So, it is actually not periodic. So, any a periodicity is shown as some error on top of this. Okay. So, let us say now we have theta equals 2 pi f naught t plus phi naught plus some phi of t. Okay. So, the difference between this and that is that this is independent of time and that is dependent on time. So, there is some error it can be any kind of error. Okay. What we assume is that <coughs> I mean you may wonder why I called this theta of t and then I also now have another phi of t here. Okay, I could have worked with this, but the point is the following theta of t will have some uh, average ramp value okay. or if you look at uh, the frequency you know is uh, the instantaneous frequency is 1 over 2 pi d theta by d t. Okay. So, you do this and you take the average value okay. this is f naught. So, what we are saying is we have a signal with a certain uh, frequency f naught and then or average value or some nominal value okay, this uh, definition keeps changing and then the phase offset I put here. So, this phi of t represents the errors on top of that. Okay. So, phi of t can be anything actually it can also have a non zero average as we will uh, see later either non zero average or even non zero ramp structure as we will soon see, but uh, 
essentially when I split it up like this, let me not say it is the average value, basically it is the nominal value. I expect it to be at some frequency, it is a 2 pi f naught t and then there is some phase on top of that there can be some error. Okay. This phi of t itself can have many different uh, shapes. Okay. This is fine. So, now if the phase let us say was uh, doing this, if phi of t was like that, then theta of t would be this plus that right, it will be something like that. Okay. Now, if you look at it, <coughs> the period of uh, cos theta of t is whenever this, uh, this curve crosses integer multiples of 2 pi. Okay. So, now you can see that those durations are not equal. On the y axis you have to cross 2 pi, 4 pi and so on, but on the x axis that will not correspond to equal duration. So, some periods will be shorter, some periods will be longer and so on. So, this phi of t represents that deviation from periodicity. Okay. This is fine. Now, also I think that the nominal frequency is f naught. Okay. So, theta of t is uh, 2 pi f naught t plus uh, phi naught, may be phi naught I will just set it to 0 to simplify the notation plus some phi of t, but the actual frequency is some f 1 not equal to f naught. Okay. So, what will be this phi of t? <coughs> In that case, I mean I have a signal let us say at uh, 1.01 gigahertz. I think of the nominal frequency as uh, 1 gigahertz. So, that is why I have said f naught to 1 gigahertz, but uh, the phase of that 1.1 gigahertz signal if I represent it like this, what is phi of t? What is that? Yeah. So, basically it will be <coughs> 2 pi f naught t and phi of t itself is a ramp. Okay. So, the reason I show it is if this phi of t itself is a ramp that means that you are getting a different frequency signal, okay, signal at a different average frequency. Is this okay? Any questions here? In this case, the way I have drawn it, the average value of phi of t is 0. Okay. So, that means that the average period of this is uh, still f naught, but it is not as though every cycle has a duration of 1 by f naught, some of them is longer, some of them are shorter. Okay. But if you have if uh, phi of t was a ramp error, so let us say like this, if this was phi of t, okay, then the result would be like that. So, every cycle is shorter than the other one, the original one. Okay. This is fine. So, this can be initially confusing because uh, we have phase and frequency and they themselves are functions of time and we will also take the spectra of those quantities. So, you have frequency and when you take its spectrum, you will plot its uh, content versus frequency. I mean that is a different frequency now, it is the how the frequency itself varies with time. Okay. So, do not get uh, confused with those things. It's, uh, quite simple, but you have to get used to it initially. right? And uh, it is very common in the domain of clock and data recovery and phase lock loops to operate with phase as the primary variable, because that is what is our concern, not the voltage waveform. Right? <coughs> so, now let us go back to what we have identified so far is that First of all, this is the CDR with forward rate clock, meaning the transmit clock is sent to this. Okay, and in case of uh, in case where we don't have a forward rate clock, we need to have a VCO. Okay, voltage controlled oscillator. And let's assume that the VCO generates the clock 
that uh, operates the phase detector. Okay. I mean what else will generate it? VCO we are generating earlier we were getting the clock from the other side, we were only delaying it. Now, we have to generate our own clock. So, that is why we have the VCO and we have to somehow adjust this control voltage in a way that the phase and frequency of this clock match that of D in. Okay. Is this fine? So, how do we do that? <coughs> in order to do that, first let us look at the definition and behavior of the VCO. And how is the VCO defined? The VCO outputs a periodic signal. I will write it as cos, but it is not necessarily a cosine signal, it can be any periodic signal. And it is that 2 pi f naught t, where here f naught is the free running frequency of the VCO. This is somewhat arbitrary, but basically, in the sort of standard textbook definition, if you set V control to 0 it will still be oscillating at some frequency that is uh, f naught free running frequency okay plus 2 pi k v c o integral of v control d t okay <coughs> There can also be some offset, I will not include that, it is not necessary here. So, the phase of the signal is 2 pi f naught t plus 2 pi k v c o integral of v control d t and the instantaneous frequency of the signal is 1 over 2 pi derivative of theta, which is f naught plus k v c o times v control. Okay. This is why it is called a voltage controlled oscillator. The frequency is uh, controlled by this control voltage V control. Okay. And if you plot the value of F i versus V control for a DC V control, you will get something like this. For V control equal to 0, you get F naught and it changes with some slope equals K V C O. Okay. What are the units of K V C O? Hertz per volts. Okay, so this is again something to very simple, but something to keep track of because we get two pi's in different places. You have to know which is for radians per second, which is for hertz. But we will use the KVC or definition in hertz per volt. I mean, you can have. I mean, maybe there are other reference material where KVC is defined in radians per second per volt. Okay. So this is what happens. <coughs> now. I said theta is 2 pi f naught t plus 2 pi k v c o integral of v control d t. Okay. I'll plot theta. First, I'll plot this part. That is 2 pi f naught t. Okay. Well, let us say I have a DC value of V control, I will assume that V control is constant with time okay. and I have V control greater than 0. What will this part look like? It is a rising ramp, so it will be something like that and if I have a DC V control less than 0, it will be a falling ramp. Okay, and the total phase will be in this case it corresponds to a smaller slope, a lower frequency, and in the other case to a higher frequency. Okay. So, this is the free running component, and this is 
a higher frequency and this is a lower frequency ok. All this is just background to get the possible topology of a clock and data recovery circuit where we do not have a forwarded clock ok. Now, how do we go about figuring out what we should do? So, let us say this is one of the common techniques. I want to I already have a solution here right with forwarded clock. I want this to behave more or less the same way, but of course, I do not have the clock input. So, what I do is the following I just break the loop here ok. Then I apply some clock I can call it test clock. This is a fixed frequency it happens to be exactly the same as clock in but it will have some phase relationship to d in ok. Let me assume that clock test is lagging d in right that is the rising edge of clock test is to the right of uh, the middle of d in ok. Now, what can you say about this signal in this case? The phase detector is being clocked by uh, test clock which is lagging the input data by some amount ok. So, what will happen to this clock? What is it that you will see? What will be the phase detector output? Up, up will be high if the clock is lagging the data up will be high right. Every cycle up will be high ok. Let us ignore the pulse like nature of up but up is continuously high let us assume. So, what happens to this voltage? Hmm? It will be constantly increasing ok. something like this. Let us say this is the data or maybe I will show alternating data that is easier ok and the test clock happens to be So, what will happen now? If you look at the average of uh, up minus down, I will plot only the average because I do not want to plot the pulse right. So, that will be some positive value right. This is the average you will have up and down both pulses, but up area more than down area, but this will be the average. So, on average what will be V c? <coughs> yeah, it will be linearly increasing. So, this is also the average behavior. So, V c is linearly increasing. what will this clock look like? In every cycle what happens? Huh? So, basically in one cycle the clock edge moves to the left by some amount, in the next one by double that amount, in the third one by three times that amount and so on. So, actually what is it that you are getting here? How is this related to this clock, clock related to clock in? The edges of uh, clock in, let us say you start synchronized with the edge of the clock in. In the next period, edge of clock is slightly to the left, the next one even more to the left, in the next one even more to the left. So, what uh, what does that uh, mean?
clock in is like this. So, let us say the first edge happened to be coincident, then the next one is slightly to the left, the next one is even more to the left, the next one is even more to the left and the next one is even more to the left and so on. So, this is clock and this is what comes out of the delay line, uh, sorry this is a clock in, this is what comes out of the delay line. So, what is the relationship between this? Its frequency is higher, right? Okay. So, that is the way to correct phase. That is, if you want to advance the clock edge, what do you do? If you make the frequency slightly higher, the periods will become smaller and the edges will become advanced. Okay. Is this clear? So, essentially what we are doing even in the other case, let us say if we break the loop, if we break the loop and give a fixed clock which is lagging the uh, input data, essentially what we are producing is a clock whose frequency is constantly uh, whose frequency is higher, okay, whose phase is constantly increasing. The frequency is higher by a certain amount. Okay.